Hello, you guys, and welcome back to another Flower Ed podcast. In case you weren't around last week in the Facebook group, we had a live Q&A and it was honestly just like so, so incredible. So if you haven't already, go and watch the replay and make sure you get your butt into the Facebook group because that is where all the good stuff happens. But also exciting news, I started a broadcast channel on Instagram, which is like so random. I was just on Instagram this morning and I was like, hmm, Let's just see like what this function is on Instagram. And all of a sudden there's like 160 of you in there, which is just like so exciting, so wild. And I just honestly love this community so, so much. Like you guys are just the coolest humans ever. I'm going to assume that most of you that are listening are in there. If you're not, go and jump in there. It's going to be all of my my insights, all of my thought provoking questions, daily drops, the things that come through my brain. And it's a nice little snippet into Calibrate my container, which is just the most incredible space in itself as well. So I post all of this stuff that I'm going to post inside the Instagram broadcast channel on threads, but I feel like no one is on threads, which kind of just makes sense for wedding florists. It's not going to be the most productive sort of social platform in terms of business for flower business owners compared to say Instagram, Pinterest, TikTok, things like that. So I didn't want you guys to miss out on the juice in case you're not on threads. So I started this broadcast and you guys are frothing it. So this is kind of what prompted me to create the topic for today's podcast, which is really just about what is required of you as a business owner to build the business of your dreams. The one that you're dreaming of right now, the vision that you have at the moment It can only happen if you do what's required. And what I've come to notice over the last week or so is that not everyone does that, which is really funny because I was sort of under the impression that everyone is doing what is required of them to build their dream business, but I just don't think it's the case. And here's why. I feel like some people say that building a business is hard or confusing or unclear or whatever it may be. And while that could be true, there is also so much free content at your fingertips. There's also all of the most insane paid containers that you can jump into as well. So the way that this kind of came about was that I had a look at my two free offers that I currently have, which is the live Uh, sorry, the recorded Q&A, which goes for four hours. So it's kind of like a four hour podcast Q&A episode and also my new free offer, Flowers Don't Sell. So woo, we're excited about the new offer. That's really cool. And what was really interesting is that there is a lot of people in those offers, yet not everyone has watched the offer. So, so interesting where it's completely free. The only investment is time People say they want to build a business, yet not everyone has actually watched the content. This content could literally change your life. Flowers don't sell. If you were to follow the sequence that I speak about, if you were to start to implement the mindset that I speak to, your whole entire business could shift, which is so cool. And I'm going to guess that because you're listening to this podcast, you're investing your time right now. You've probably also watched it. So what's really funny as well, I've created this episode about the 1% you probably are the 1%, but I want to speak to it anyway, just in case anyone who is sort of just moving conditionally in their business or only sort of half in, I'm like, you need to just be fully in your business. If you've ever heard the quote, burn the bridges, it's sort of that idea. Wait, burn the, burn the bridges, burn the boats. I'm not sure which one it is. <laughs> it's one of those. Burn the bridges, burn the boats, whatever it means. It's just meaning that you are all in, in your business. There's no plan B. There's no sort of half in, half out. There's no half fast. You are in and you are committed to your next evolution. And what's really cool is that you are probably that human because you have invested the time to listen to this podcast which is just so cool. So I'm celebrating you if you are that 1%. And even if you are, I feel like we can even do better every single day, all the time. There is always going to be a space where you can be even more committed to your growth, to that next evolution. The other part where this sort of came up about the 1%, about the the humans who are doing what is required of them to build a business is that so often 
all of this mindset stuff is going to come up, right? Where things are going to feel icky. And so often it's very, very easy to tap out in those moments where it's like, oh, it feels icky. I'm tapping out. It feels like shit. So I'm just going to like go in a hole for a few days. The 1%, they lean in. I am all for sitting in feelings. I am all for feeling every single depth of emotion. A hundred percent. I'm for that. A hundred percent. But it also comes to a point where it's like, are you just trying to avoid the actual feeling by trying to avoid figuring out why this feeling is, is in existence? For example, let's say you get a complaint. If you're like, they're idiots, we blame the world, we project onto the clients, we emotionally dump, we call our partners and we bitch about them. And then we just do things to make ourselves feel better where it's like, oh, I'm just going to go off socials. I'm just going to go for a walk. I'm just going to um, go to the gym, make yourself feel better. I'm going to meditate. I'm going to say affirmations in the mirror. All it's doing is a bandaid fix. That's it. You're not actually going to dissolve anything. What's going to happen is you're going to continue looping back to this same spot, further perpetuating whatever's going on in your brain. So if you get a complaint and you make it mean that something about you, where it's like, I must suck as a florist. I must suck as a business owner. But instead of looking at that, instead, if you chuck a bandaid on by just trying to make yourself feel better, then you're like, oh, I feel better. Problem dissolved. Incorrect. Problem has not been dissolved because you don't actually know why that's come up. You don't actually know what's going on here because you're not willing to look at it. You're not willing to sit in the icky shit that comes. It's It comes with the territory of being a business owner and it also comes with the territory of growing a business, of, of growth of building the business. Every single level that you meet is going to be met with something that feels like shit. (laughs) And this isn't me saying that business has to feel like shit for you to be growing. It's not me to, to say that it's, um, this negative thing that we, that has to happen when you're growing a business. But what it is to say is that you're going to be constantly meeting your edges because that is what is required for you to grow your business. Therefore, when this icky stuff comes up, when you're like, I don't like this feeling, rather than tapping out, running away, avoiding, letting all of your ego reactivity come out, rather than emotionally dumping, rather than just blaming and complaining and and putting it on everything external, what if you just sat with it for a hot sec? A hot sec. Like, what if you just sat in that feeling and looked at it? Where is this coming from? What am I making this mean? Am I making this mean something about me? Am I dramatizing the fuck out of it? When actually, what if I put myself in their shoes? Is it just a matter of me having to hold someone else's projection and equally just let it fall back on them? Or do I need to take some self-responsibility in this moment? You have a choice every single time. But for as long as you are just trying to avoid the actual thing, you're just going to continue looping back and back time and time again. The 1%, they lean in. They look at the stuff that doesn't feel like sunshine and rainbows and puppies because that is what is required of you as you're building a business. You have to be willing to hold more. You have to be willing to build a really strong and resilient human, but that cannot happen if every time you have an opportunity to do so, you tap out. That can't happen. All you're doing is delaying your next evolution. Every time you want to tap out, that's all that you're doing. Imagine if you just lent in. And even better, imagine if you lent in with support. This is why mentors exist. This is why one-to-one coaching containers exist. It's why mini minds and masterminds exist so that you've got the support to lean in. So that you can then step into that next evolution. So that the next time something comes up, you're going to be the strongest, most resilient human, which is really, really cool. 
I plugged into the broadcast and threads <laughs> um, the other day with something that has got a lot of love on it. And I think it's a really cool point to speak to. And it says to all the business owners hustling to make it happen, even when no one is buying, even when there's no evidence that it's right, even when people are projecting on you, even when your bank account's at zero, even when people aren't engaging, you're the 1%. Keep going. Because what happens when no one's buying? You tap out. What happens when there's absolutely no evidence to say that what you're doing is the right thing? What happens when no one's engaging, when your bank account's at zero, when people are projecting all their shit onto you? If you're letting all of those things dictate the pace at which you're moving, you can imagine the momentum that isn't being created in business. Just quickly, in case you've missed it, you've been living under a rock, you haven't been on Instagram in the last week or two or in the email list, firstly, where have you been? And secondly, we have launched Flowers Don't Sell, which is my free masterclass for wedding and event flower business owners and just business owners in general. However, I do speak to the consultation process, pricing, quoting, all those types of things. In Flowers Don't Sell, I tell you about my experience, about when no one was buying and why no one was buying. I talk you through the sequence that I focus on to lessen ghosting and keep really beautiful aligned clients in my world who trust me and give me creative license and of course I also talk about all of the mindset juice that completely shifted the way that I showed up and sold and continue to sell to clients in both of my businesses so click the link down below if you want to jump into flowers don't sell it is absolutely free you have instant access I cannot wait to see you in there dm me once you're in because I want to celebrate you but imagine if you just kept hustling, even when no one's buying, even when your bank account's at zero, even when you have to hold projections from other people. You're the most resilient human there is. That is the, the biggest superpower that you could have as a business owner is moving regardless of what is happening externally. Imagine if you only showed up in business when someone buys. Imagine if you only created content if someone was to purchase your thing on that day. Imagine that conditional relationship in a romantic relationship. How would that feel? It would feel like shit. <laughs> and it's exactly the same thing for your clients. People get get sales, they'll get a client, they'll get a little bit of money in their bank account, they'll have some kind of evidence, yet it's never enough. It is never enough. Imagine if it was enough. Imagine if you were like, oh, perfect. Imagine if that one client that you have in your world right now, imagine how they would feel if you're like, mm, you're not enough. I want more. And this isn't to say that you can't want more. That's the whole point. You're allowed to want more. I expect you to want more. But it's going to be very, very different when you're moving regardless of who's coming in or out. When you are just hustling and laser focused on building this thing, it doesn't matter if no one's buying. It doesn't matter if no one's engaging. I also wrote another thing, which I'll read out in those two spots, where it says three months is the minimum period of momentum that's required until you see the, the momentum tangibly. So if you do the thing once, you still have three more months to go. So keep going. It's like when someone posts something on Instagram twice a week and they're like, where's the momentum? I'm like, why are you expecting it right now? You need to be hustling and doing it every single day for three months. It's the same with getting leads, whatever that looks like. It's the same with fixing the back end or starting a podcast, like whatever it is 
three months for me is the absolute minimum to be able to actually look at any data, to be able to stop and go, is this working or not? Yet people do it for a day, for one post, for one minute. And they're like, oh, no one's engaging. What is happening? The world is falling apart. They'll, they'll post about the thing that they're selling once and they're like, no one's buying. What's that all about? I'm like, do it every single day for three months at least. And then come to me and say that it's not working. But doing something once, you can't collect any data from that. And equally, you shouldn't expect anything from doing something once. Even doing something for a few days or a few weeks, it's still not enough. The 1%, they're going to do it regardless of what's happening externally. And that's exactly what I want for you. I want you to move no matter what. Complaint comes in, doesn't matter. I'm going to move. No one's bought in the last four weeks, doesn't matter. I'm going to move. Bank accounts at zero, even more of a reason to move. No one's engaged in for on any of my posts. Firstly, I'm going to say that that might not be true. If you have one view on your reel, someone's engaged. Someone stopped and watched that piece of content. Yet 100, 200, 300 views isn't enough. You're chasing this thing that is never going to come. Because I can tell you that once you get to 10,000 views on a reel, you're then going to be like, "Mm, it's not enough. I want 100,000. I'm telling you this from experience. I remember getting my first 10,000 views on a reel and it was insane. I was so excited and it was wild. And the next minute I was like, okay, where's the 11,000? Where's the 12,000? I then hit a million views on a reel. So then what happened? Every single reel that came after that, I'm like, huh, hasn't hit a million. No one's engaged. Sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? Yet that's exactly what you're doing no matter where you're at, whether you've got millions and millions of views or whether you've got 10. It's never enough until you actually hold the gratitude to know that it is enough and to know that if you keep going, it's going to be enough. It's so funny because this is what happens, right? And this is just the most basic example when I speak to like real views because I know that so many people can relate. But let's say you get you get 100 views on a reel and you want 10,000. Yet when you see that, that number of 100, you go, it's not working, so I'm going to stop trying. Yet your whole point of not trying is because there isn't 10,000, yet you're not going to get 10,000 by not trying. Do you see it? It's like so ironic. It's like a catch-22. It's like you have to do the thing to get the thing, not tap out. It makes no sense. It's like people that are, that are saying, I'm not making enough money, so I'm going to move into self-doubt. I'm going to tap out. I'm going to blame the world. I'm going to blame cost of living. I'm going to blame where I live, whatever it may be. How is doing that going to get you close to the thing that you're currently complaining about? It's not. It makes no sense. The 1%, they're going to move regardless. They're going to look at whatever is happening in their world as the most incredible thing. They're going to move with so much gratitude. You know, the coolest thing, and I know that you've heard this before through socials a hundred percent, but I think we need a reminder sometimes if you have five people who are liking your content, think of those five people standing in front of you, clapping for you and cheering for you. Now, imagine if you have a hundred views, imagine if you have a hundred likes, imagine a hundred People standing in front of you, cheering for you, going, fuck yes, go girl. That's insane. Go and Google how many people a hundred people is. It's a fucking lot. Then imagine if you got a thousand. Imagine if you got a thousand views on a reel. 
Again, I'm just using this as like texture for context, but just put this in whatever capacity you want. Imagine a thousand people in front of you. Yet it's like it's not enough. If you have three people buy into your thing, that is three people who are handing you over money because they trust in you to deliver on the thing that you're speaking about because they believe in you, because they want to be in your world. That's amazing. Yet so many people are like, it's never enough. The 1%, they see it as enough. It's this duality of seeing it as enough, equally wanting more, but not tapping out every time things aren't enough. Things are always enough if you lean into gratitude. So go and be that 1%. Go and be that 1% where you're going to move even when no one's buying. Even when your bank account's at zero. Even when, quote unquote, no one's engaging with your stuff. Even when, quote unquote, no one's bought your stuff ever. And what's really funny is that while those things could all be very, very true if if you're in that first initial phase of building your business, I'm also going to bet that a lot of you that are listening who are more established in business, think of the numbers that are moving in your world. You mean someone handed over $3,000 for a wedding to you? That's insane. You mean that for, for this year, you've had 10 clients, 10 people, 10. That's insane. And I bet once you would have dreamt to be where you are, you would have dreamt to have 10 clients. So just lean into gratitude, right? Be the 1% that keeps building that momentum unconditionally. 